It's July 9, 2024, about 3.45 in the afternoon. What I want to do today is just give you a sort of walk around on my 1973 Allied Princess 36 Sequester. What we're going to do is go on deck, look at all the systems there, then we're going to go inside and have a look at the interior. And I'll tell you uh, about the various things uh, that the boat is equipped with. Okay, let's get going. Okay, here's Sequester from off the boat. And the first thing you can see when you look at the boat is it's a catch. It has a fairly tall forward mast and a shorter aft mast that is located forward of the rudder post. That's what makes it a catch as opposed to a yawl. And the aft mast is much bigger than it would be on a yawl. Uh, Sequester potentially can fly uh, four sails at once. They are the Genoa jib here, which is rolled up on the furler, which we'll talk about in a little bit. A mainsail, which is at home in my garage, along with the main boom, uh, which, and I'll talk about why that's the case in a little bit. And it has a mizzen sail, and you can also fly what's called a mizzen stay sail, which is a light sail similar to an asymmetrical spinnaker that goes from the top of the mizzen down to some point on the cabin top and uh, is a light air sail. I do not have one. Uh, in addition, the boat has the gear to fly an asymmetrical spinnaker, which I do have, but have only used two or three times since I bought the boat 29 years ago. So that's uh, a big factor in sailing. I have an almost new asymmetrical. Okay, what about the sails? Uh, the sails I have on it right now are 130% uh, Genoa, which is 335 square feet. And uh, jibs come in sizes from around 75% all the way up to 170. And, uh, but a 130 is a good compromise size. It's big enough to get you some push, but small enough that it's a little easier to handle. Going back aft, we have a mizzen. The mizzen is a much smaller sail than the Genoa. In this case, our mizzen is 93 square feet. It has a hoist of 21 and a half feet and a little bit over an eight foot long foot so and it flies off the mizzen mast now if i had a mainsail the mainsail has about a 36 foot uh, hoist and about a 13 and a half foot foot and comes in at a little over 250 square feet this boat is not very fast the way it's rigged now in light air but anything above about 12 to 15 knots I can get up to hull speed, which is just over seven knots. And in fact, we have had the boat up to eight knots a few times uh, with just the Mizzen and the Genoa. But it was blowing pretty hard at those times. Now, my Genoa is a brand new sail this year. Uh, last year, I had to take my old Genoa down for a storm and I discovered it was in pretty rough shape so I hand restitched it because there is no sail maker in this area anymore and I didn't feel like taking it all the way over to Rockland so I hand stitched it and made it functional for the rest of the year but in early October I decided well I'll order a new sail so I'll have it for next year of course it came a couple days after haul out so I had a brand new sail in uh, my garage all winter and this Genoa is made by a company called Raleigh Tasker which is in Southeast Asia in Thailand and they make very nice sales for very good prices my mizzen is also a Raleigh Tasker sale it's almost 20 years old but I ordered it out of very heavy sailcloth 
for its size. It's a nine ounce Dacron sail, very stout sail, because I used to like to sail in heavy air. I don't do that so much anymore. But as a consequence, uh, that uh, mizzen sail is not stretched out much at all. And despite being almost 20 years old, is it still in very good condition. Could use a good scrubbing though. Okay, what else have we got on the boat that's real obvious here? We have a Dodger. Dodger is, I believe this is its third year. Uh, this is the second Dodger we have bought for the boat since we bought it. And this is our 29th season. The original Dodger was built in 1987. We replaced it in the early 2000s. Uh, and then it gave up. It started literally falling apart uh, three years ago. So we put this Dodger on. And this is, was built locally. And our previous Dodger was also built locally over there in the building right behind the flag there used to be a sailmaker who also did canvas work but unfortunately they went out of business so what other things have we got on board we have two day night solar vents one there that's over the uh, salon table and this one which is on a dorada box is over the head and those are nice they draw air out they keep the boat ventilated they run during the day from solar panels and they also have a battery that uh, charges up during the day and runs them overnight so they run 24 hours a day and uh, are pretty uh, good at keeping the boat boat well ventilated the masts are both deck stepped the main is stepped right there on the cabin top. It is 40 feet long. And back aft, the mizzen is stepped on the cockpit sole down there, and it is 30 feet long. Our air draft, the high point on the boat, way up there, is 46 feet, not including the radio, radio antenna whip, which is about uh, two feet long, uh, but very flexible, and we could you know, brush against something with it and not have a problem. So 46 feet. Overall, this is an Allied Princess 36. It is 36 feet length, and it has an 11 foot beam. But compared to a modern boat, it's quite pinched in at the stern. And which uh, make, doesn't give it as much room aft. And by modern standards, this is a relatively small boat in terms of accommodations. Now, let's look at a couple of other things. So what about standing rigging? One of the first things I did when I bought this boat back in 1997 was I put a new roller furler on it. That's a Hood Sea Furl SL. I don't think they make them anymore. And as part of putting that on, I put a new forestay on. And it's still in good shape. I check it every year and there are no issues with it. And it, that forestay was built with a mechanical or Staylock brand fittings. They're not swaged on. And here, the main mast has six shrouds, three on each side, two lowers, forward and aft, and a cap shroud on each side. Uh, a couple years ago, I replaced the cap shrouds and turnbuckles uh, because they well, were pretty old. And so, as I said, the cap shrouds are only about three years old. And up here in Maine, where we uh, do not keep the boat in the water all year, uh, our cap shrouds and uh, you know other shrouds last a long time. Uh, my uh, lowers, I think, are original, so they're over 50 years old. But they're in fine shape. There are new issues with them. And uh, cap shroud is a little more important, though, since it goes all the way to the top of the mast. You do not want any possible failure with that. So it was worth a few hundred dollars to buy new. 
and the main also has a split backstay. If you look up there, you can see the fitting where the stay splits to go around the mizzen mast, and it comes down to a chain plate here on either side, and I replaced the backstay oh about 15 years ago. It'll probably last uh, 30 years <laughs> at least, so I'm in no rush there. The mizzen is a fairly lightly stayed uh, mast. It has six shrouds all together, a cap shroud in the middle, a forward shroud, which goes about two thirds of the way up the mast, and an aft shroud, which goes up to just below the spreaders. There is no backstay. You rely on the uh, mizzen boom sheet, <laughs> mostly as your backstay. Now, not all Allies have what I'm going to talk about next, and that is a triadic stay that goes from way up there at the top of the mizzen up to the top of the main. Now, this boat didn't have it originally. I rigged it. It is a uh, Dyneema or Spectra uh, line, which has about an 8,000 pound braking strength that uh, I rig every year. And that really stabilizes the mizzen. Okay, what about other gear? Winches. Winches are important on a sailboat. This boat came with a variant 22s, which are a fairly beefy uh, winch, but they weren't self-tailing. Matter of fact, you can see one of them over there on the cabin top. That one is doing uh, our new duty as my main sheet winch, which it doesn't get much use because of that. Uh, these are Anderson ST or 40 STs, and they are self-tailing winches. And when I bought these, one of the considerations was these can be upgraded to electric by adding a drive unit that has a shaft that goes through the pad the winch is sitting on up into the bottom of the winch. And I have in fact done that. That little black box there is the switch to run these electric winches. And I have gotten spoiled. I hardly ever use a winch handle. I do have one over there. You can see the blue winch handle at the edge of the cockpit seat. And, and uh, but most of the time I don't bother because it's so much easier just to push the button. And uh, you know, they're not super fast, but they do the job. And they use surprisingly little power not because they don't draw a lot of power when they're running, but because you don't run them for long. A typical tack, I might run that winch for three, four seconds. And so it just isn't a lot of power. And the boat has shore power. The connector is on the other side of the cockpit and you cannot see it from here, but we never plug it in. The last time I plugged the boat in was in 1996. What we have is two small solar panels that go down to a solar charge controller and into the battery bank. We took the boat out yesterday and sailed it. And these two little panels have completely recharged the batteries. They are currently at float. So that was nice. Doesn't take a lot when you don't have a lot of electrical stuff on the boat. We have the usual running lights and uh, that, but that's all the electrical stuff on deck is just the running lights uh, anchor light uh, mast light and stern light and the two bow lights okay let's go on board and have a look at a few other things okay looking forward you can see it has teak cabin top handrails those are mirrored by identical handrails inside they're through bolted through the cabin top to the inside handrails so they're very sturdy the boat used to have a, a little one inch teak cap on the bulwark but it had been sanded so many times by the time we got the boat that the bungs were all uh, basically sanded through and i finally 
uh, decided it wasn't worth fooling with and I removed them on both sides and filled all the holes and repainted the bulwarks. Now before we go to the other side let's look up here at the bow. The boat originally had a single aluminum bow cleat. You can see the four white spots on the deck. That is where that uh, cleat was through bolted to a backing plate underneath. And many years ago, oh, 25 years ago, I took that cleat off and put these two light duty uh, 15 inch stainless steel cleats on. And they are bolted through to backing plates. In addition, I have a Lumar electric windlass and uh, we have an all chain road, although it is backed up by 150 feet of nylon, but we never put all the chain out. So I don't think I've ever used that nylon road. The windlass has controls here on the deck, foot controls. The anchor is, looks like a CQR, but it isn't. It is a Danforth plow anchor. I've never seen one on another boat. It's getting a little rusty, probably could stand to be galvanized, but it's not going to fail. And uh, it's a reliable anchor. I've never had it drag. But I make a big deal out of setting the uh, anchor properly. There underneath the uh, where the forestay attaches, there is a stainless steel uh, chain plate that goes down the front of the hull. Uh, are the chocks they will accommodate up to a one inch line on either side and you can see the chocks are one inch diameter stainless steel rod welded to that stainless plate they're very very sturdy and this boat has withstood over 60 knots on the mooring with no issues okay let's head aft now, we also have a couple of old hose pipes that one of these days I have to remove and glass over. Uh, since I put the windlass in, those are redundant. Going back aft, I'll show you one other thing. All right there on top of the bulwark is a cleat. Those are our midship cleats. Uh, the boat did not come with midship cleats, so you had to tie off your spring lines to a shroud or maybe a stanchion base. Uh, I didn't like that so I installed the midship cleats. Those are through bolted to a stainless steel backing plate. In fact it is an old chain plate where the uh, holes for the bolts just matched the hat cleat perfectly. So that's uh, through bolted to a uh, foot long stainless steel backing plate that's just the right width to go up into the bottom of the bulwark. And uh, then here this little stainless steel thing is the chimney cap for our cabin heater. And I'll show you that when we get below. But before I do that I'll tell you it is a Dickinson uh, Newport propane fireplace, the P12000, which uh, is very good at taking the chill off the boat uh, if it was really cold, like down in the 40s, it probably wouldn't be the world's most effective heater. And we've got our Genoa tracks back here. They are outboard, so this boat cannot be sheeted in really tight. And, uh, and the lines go back to another Anderson 40 ST winch. Anderson winches are, in my opinion, among the best uh, sailboat winches you can buy. And they, they're uh, a little expensive, but not bad. But they're all stainless steel, uh, very high quality stainless steel. And they have uh, very nice bearings. Uh, they do not need to be serviced as often as, say, Lumars or Harkins. But you still have to service them regularly. Yeah, but they're very good winches. They do not have a knurled drum. The drum is actually ribbed. And it grips really, really well. And two turns on that are enough to hand hold uh, the jib sheet in very heavy winds. 
After that, I have an Anderson 12 ST single speed self tailing winch, which is uh, set up with my furling line on it in case I feel like hand cranking the sail in rather than just pulling it in. And I also have another Anderson 10, uh, not a self tailing winch, on the mizzen mast for the mizzen halyard. And there is one of my old jib sheet winches, a Barrent 22. All stainless steel winch, and that winch is over 50 years old and still in perfect condition. Another factor with this boat is the steering. Now this boat is a uh, full keel with a cutaway forefoot with an attached rudder in the back and the prop is in an aperture uh, cut into the aft end of the keel. And the steering is what's called worm gear. Uh, you notice that the uh, wheel is more or less backwards with the shaft going aft instead of forward into a pedestal. And the steering is three and a half turns lock to lock. So I normally turn it one full turn to tack, and uh, which is a lot more than you might find on a pedestal steered boat with a spade rudder. The rudder is pretty good sized, uh, but it does, uh, it does the job. But the main thing about this steering is the worm gear basically has almost no feedback from the rudder. I can't tell how much the rudder is loaded up from the wheel. And in fact, uh, I can take my hand off the wheel, uh, no matter how much uh, load is on there, and the wheel won't move. The worm gear uh, is completely isolates you from the rudder and the plus side of that is, is when I'm sailing a long way on a single tack in relatively steady winds, I can get the boat balanced up and I do not have to uh, fool with the wheel at all. As a matter of fact, I've gone for half an hour without touching the wheel. And the boat doesn't have an autopilot. There are a couple reasons for that. One is that because of the worm gear steering, it's very expensive to put an autopilot on one of these boats and I just didn't feel like spending that kind of money on it. And the other reason is, well, this is Maine. Uh, there's lobster gear out there. It's starting to show up pretty significantly here inshore. And in another month, uh, you won't be able to do a straight line for more than about 50 yards without hitting a lobster float. <laughs> and if you were running on autopilot, you're gonna run over them with the engine running, which isn't good. Now this boat with the prop and an aperture, if you don't let the prop turn when you're sailing, I always put the uh, transmission in reverse when I'm underway, which keeps the prop from turning, it generally doesn't snag lobster gear. If it does, as soon as I figure out which side of the boat it's snagged on, on which propeller blade, all I have to do is turn in that direction and the line will slide off. <laughs> now. Down there is the throttle control. That is a single lever throttle control. If you push that little red button on it in, it becomes a pure throttle. If the button is out, it is a combination shifter and throttle. You push it forward, the boat goes into gear, and if you keep pushing that uh, lever forward, the engine throttles up. So what is the engine in this boat? It has a Westerbeek 46. The boat was repowered by the previous owner in 1987, and that's when that Westerbeek was built. It's a 1987 Westerbeek 46, which is a 46 horsepower diesel engine, which is probably more than this boat needs by, oh, at least 10 horsepower, and maybe more. Um, over here are the engine controls, and I need to replace the uh, Lexan cover on it again. I made that one many years ago, and it's over the years has gotten scratched up, so it's hard to read. That engine control used to be centered right behind the mizzen mast and almost impossible to see. So a few years ago, actually 10 years ago, uh, rebuilt the cockpit and moved it over there. Now. The defi despite the engine being 37 years old, it is uh, only has 
1293 hours on it and it runs fine I don't know if you've listened to my videos where I started the engine it fires right up I mean it just cranks maybe once or twice and then it goes and uh, it always starts right away and I'm pretty happy with that the only issue the engine has right now is that I do have a valve guide that could be replaced. Uh, what happens is when the engine is sitting after you've run it for a while, there is engine up in the top of the, oh, there's engine oil up in the top of the head, and a little bit of that oil drips down through that valve guide into the cylinder, so that when you start the engine up, it smokes until that oil burns off, and that valve guide warms up and seals. So within two minutes or so of starting the engine, the smoking goes away. And it isn't really a problem that's worth the issue to fix it. So what about electronics on the boat? You don't see much here. Compass over there. This is a Ray Marine by data. It has a depth sounder and a paddle wheel for speed it also has a temperature sensor so it actually picks up three kinds of information uh, but uh, I don't know why they call it a buy data but that's what they call it it is uh, unfortunately the uh, paddle wheel sensor died years ago I replaced it it worked for about another couple of years and then died and I haven't bothered with it uh, we have a chart plotter which gives us GPS speed and that's what we use for boat speed. I do have another sophisticated instrument there underneath the companionway and that's a clinometer to see how much the boat is healed. And over there that little white thing at the aft end of the cockpit combing is uh, a heading sensor and GPS antenna and that was on there so that I could overlay my radar onto the old chart plotter. But about seven years ago, my radar died and I haven't replaced it yet. That heading sensor still works. It's NMEA 2000. So it works with my new Raymarine chart plotter, even though that is a Simrad uh, device. Okay, so that's it for gadgetry on deck. So, and uh, the boat is pretty easy to sail. That I said I'd talk about that uh, jib furler uh, a little later. This furler, a Hood Sea Furl SL, uh, as I said, I bought it in 1997, so 27 years ago. Uh, and uh, it works fine. I have, however, uh, rebuilt it a couple of times, replaced various parts that were getting worn. It has uh, Torilon plastic bearings in it, not stainless steel, and it's designed so that rainwater and or just a rinse will keep them clean. And I do lubricate them uh, with lanolin uh, just to keep them moving well. And I have replaced the uh, ball bearings a couple of times. They're pretty simple to replace. The only difficulty is not having them roll away on you. Uh, and also up at the top of the sail, there is a swivel that has ball bearings in it that I'm probably due to replace this year when the season is over but that's pretty simple to do and they're readily available you do not have to buy them from hood you can buy them pretty much anywhere i usually get mine from granger and uh, what else now that's pretty much it for stuff in here the only other thing i do have a pad eye if we're out sailing and conditions are pretty bad uh, i do have uh, a harness and a tether i can strap in there and that's through bolted to a backing, backing plate inside the boat. So it's a pretty simple boat. There aren't a lot of gadgets. I like it that way. But let's go below and take a look at a couple of the gadgets. I should say about that roller furler is that it is not just a furler. It is sturdy enough 
to uh, reef the sail with it too, uh, which is one of the reasons I bought it. It is designed to be able to reef the sail in addition to just furling the sail. So if the wind pipes up, you can reef the sail. And this new Raleigh Tasker uh, roller furling Genoa has what's called a foam luff in it. And it is a uh, very sturdy foam luff. Uh, in contrast to my old sail, which, where the foam luff was open cell foam, this one appears to be closed cell and is much sturdier than the old one. And it's a factor in how tight the sail rolls up. It's rolled up pretty tight right now, uh, and, but that's you know almost 50% bigger than uh, the old sail used to roll up. But the idea of the foam luff is, it's in the middle of the sail. It starts oh maybe five feet from the bottom and gets bigger as you go up to about the midpoint of the sail, then gets smaller as you go further up. And when you roll the sail up, it causes the sail to uh, have to roll in more volume at the center of the sail than at the ends, which keeps the sail from being as baggy when you've got, say, 30% of the sail rolled up. And I find that if you want to uh, reef the Genoa by rolling it up part way, that you can get down to about 70% of the sail uh, out say roll up about 30 percent and uh, you still have reasonable sail shape i have not done it yet with this new uh, closed cell foam luff and i think it might actually be better than my old one okay this is the rest of my electronics suite this is a raymarine element 7s uh, chart plotter I've had it for uh, three years now it's a good chart plotter it was reasonably priced and it has uh, uh, maps for or charts for Canada and the United States built in so I don't have to buy a chart card for it and I can also if I ever decide to do it uh, connect a Raymarine wireless radar to it and it'll connect by Wi-Fi which is nice but that is the extent of our electronics suite except for one other thing back there I don't know if you can see it there is a solar charge controller what about our electrical system you saw the windlass and the electric winches and this chart plotter and our depth sounder and there's my electrical panel we have a uh, propane control because the boat does have a propane furnace and a propane stove and uh, that controls a solenoid in the back of the boat and there is an alarm connected to it so if we detect propane in the boat it will close the solenoid and basically shut the propane off and there's a, a windlass breaker and a control I can run the windlass from in here if I want to and as you can see we do not have a lot of circuits we have eight in fact so that's pretty much where we are electronically uh, the main things that the boat has below are lights and with the exception of the light over the galley which is an ancient fluorescent light that I bought back in 96 <laughs> uh, all the lights are LED so all together I think except for that fluorescent light if I turn all the lights on I'll be drawing a little over one amp so what about batteries well the boat has five batteries they're all the same uh, they are 105 amp hour flooded lead acid batteries the solar panel keeps them fully charged pretty much all the time and in the winter i just leave them on board i just uh, make sure the switches are are turned off and they get through the winter just fine my batteries are currently seven years old and still seem to be in pretty good shape i'll probably have to replace them in a couple of years so that's one of the changes i made uh, I did rewire the boat and put that electrical panel in. Um, 
and pulled out miles of ancient wiring. The boat had, had been rewired w one time previously and had the original wiring abandoned, still in place. Um, we haven't made a lot of changes inside the boat. The big change we made was when we bought the boat, the bulkheads were all um, sort of a wood grain formica. So here on the main bulkhead, uh, we put white formica on them. And the rest of the bulkheads, the white formica was such a pain to install, I just painted the rest of the bulkheads. And they have held up fine without any issues. And of course, I varnished all the teak. I don't varnish the teak as much as I'd like because uh, my wife does not like the smell of varnish until it's been on the boat for about five years. So I basically do very little varnishing uh, inside the boat. The other big thing we did was we replaced all the cushions. They used to be a really hideous uh, plaid that were in very poor condition and the foam was pretty much totally destroyed and we replaced them with these uh, Sunbrella cushions and over the years I have replaced the foam in the primary cushions where we sit and over here on this side uh, once. We also the boat did not have a quarter berth cushion when we bought it and I have one made in a blue Sunsplash Sunbrella and we we're going to do the rest of the boat in blue because my wife likes blue uh, but they discontinued that color and the closest we could get was this green. So we have one blue cushion and the rest are green. Up forward we have a V-berth with a very very uh, high quality foam uh, Sunbrella cushions. It's very high density foam because we like a firm mattress. And the boat has plenty of room up here. Uh, it has a very small head. The vanity sink, consequently, is not in the head. And uh, it's here in the V-berth, which is okay. It's not much of an issue. Uh, the only, as far as the head goes, let's open the door here. As you can see, it's pretty small. The head is the original head that came with the boat. It is a Wilcox Crittenden Skipper II. And the reason we haven't replaced it is that's a solid bronze uh, head with the exception of the porcelain bull. And it's basically bulletproof. I have uh, replaced the guts of it, all the gaskets and everything, uh, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, not too bad. But the rest of the head itself, the mechanical part of it, is, you know, works as well now as it did when the boat was new. You can see we do have the boat set up with an overboard discharge for when we're out more than three miles. In here is the holding tank. And I have it set up so that all the connections are on top of the holding tank. And the discharge is a tube that goes down to the bottom of the tank and stops about, uh, I think it's 3 sixteenths of an inch off the bottom. And it can either be pumped over the side via a pump out or put or over the side via this uh, whale pump to the through hole down there. And we usually use the pump out here at the marina. It's a 13 gallon tank, which isn't huge, but it's adequate for us for a couple of reasons. One reason is that I have the water intake for the head plumbed to the vanity sink drain. So when we want to flush the head, and pump water through it, what we do is run water into the vanity sink until we have what we think is appropriate and then uh, use that water to flush the head. So we use a fresh water flush which really cuts down on odor a lot and uh, as opposed to salt water and uh, 
you know, we don't use very much water to flush. So that's uh, a big factor in the small holding tank, which for the two of us is good for four or five days, easily. Okay. The boat also has a hanging locker here, a number of drawers there, five drawers, and there's a stowage underneath where I have my spare anchor. And back here is our Dickinson uh, Newport P12,000 propane fireplace, which works beautifully. If you've had it for almost 20 years, and it is a very nice feature. You can see the flame in there, and it's quite pleasant at night. I like it a lot better than, a, say, a wood fireplace, because I can turn it off. Uh, the galley is, again, very simple. We have pressure water, hot and cold. There is a water heater uh, just behind the bulkhead there, which is heated by the engine, or if we ever plugged into shore power, could be heated by shore power. Haven't had it plugged into shore power though since 96. It's a good water heater, a good quality Raritan one, and it's been in there for, oh gosh, over 20 years, and it still works just fine. Um, we have the original propane range here with an oven, three burners, that uh, works fine. The only negative of it is it does not have a piezoelectric lighting system like a modern propane range. So uh, if I want to light it, I have to use something else. We have these little butane lighters that we use for it, and they work just fine. You just, and even if they're out of butane, they spark, and so you just have to click it a few times and the spark will light the burner. So, that's it. As you can see, we do not have a lot of fancy stuff. We do have, if we plug into shore power, we have AC outlets, but we've never used them. And they are, I did rewire them properly, uh, but as I said, we've never used them. So we do not have a lot of electrical components on the boat. Although we have 525 amp hours of uh, lead acid battery capacity, so about 260 amp hours usable, we very, very seldom use more than 10% of that. Uh, one other big change I made to the boat was in the past, uh, the boat had a uh, a uh, cabin sole, which was a plywood cabin sole with a very thin teak veneer on it. And it had gotten very worn over the years. And I ripped it out and put this cherry and white maple sole in that I built. So, boat is still pretty original. New cushions, new cabin sole. The boat didn't have a holding tank. Originally, I put that in and... Uh, other than and new wiring but no other stuff i do actually have an inverter on board it's up on a shelf up there in the four peak and but it's one that you just clip to the battery posts it's not hardwired in and i think it's been like eight years since i used it last uh, so we don't uh, use much power on the boat and that's why the 40 watts of solar that we have keeps up more than adequately. Okay, so that's a quick overview of my Allied Princess 36 Sequester. Uh, her on-deck systems, sails, winches, everything, and what the boat is like down below. It's quite a comfortable boat, and uh, we enjoy it quite a bit. It has you know, good room down below. Uh, not by modern standards, but by 1973 standards, it's a roomy uh, sailboat. Okay, hope you found it interesting, and thanks for watching.